Thank you very much, Tom. And I also would like to thank the uh, Great Lakes Indian Fish and Wildlife Commission for inviting me back today to talk about uh, co-management and sort of the seeds of co-management as I seen them in the early days as we developed the organization and what those visions were of the tribal leadership that resulted in the existence of initially the Great Lakes Indian Fisheries Commission and uh, subsequently the Great Lakes Indian Fish, Fish and Wildlife Commission. I think one of the things that is, is so important about uh, the success that you see not only here today but what has been going on over the last 25 years and I think historically is, is the ability to have that success really uh, results and is, is shared by a lot of people. I know that for a lot of us who, who work anywhere, one of, the, one of the foundations of support and the sources from which we gain strength is our own families. And I was glad to have my wife here with me today along with uh, uh, two of our eight grandchildren uh, to sort of witness uh, some of what uh, has been important not only in my life but in their lives too for the last 25 years. Not only in terms of uh, developing this organization and, and uh, getting our feet on the ground when it comes to uh, taking tribal governments taking their positions as governments and as managers of the resource, but also generally in, in, in my work as an attorney uh, representing tribes not only in the natural resource area but in other areas. I too have been truly blessed. The seeds of co-management, I believe, have always been within the tribes. We were certainly responsible in the early days for regulating members' conduct uh, prior to uh, contact uh, and uh, post-contact Europeans who came here. Uh, I think that at the time that we sort of lost control over that part of our management, we certainly, uh, the resources certainly have not done better. I think the, the record clearly reflects that the resources are greatly, have been greatly burdened and we know now today that you know our absence during that period uh, took away from what what otherwise I think would have been a very uh, continuing ongoing presence that would be felt uh, by patients in the protection of those resources. In 1979 and 1980, uh, while I was in law school, I clerked uh, up at uh, the Red Cliff Reservation. My dad was the vice chairman at the time. I, the chairman of the tribe was Dick Gurnall, and I spent both of those summers sort of as listening sessions with them. Red Cliff at that point had gone through a uh, state law case which reaffirmed and recognized the tribe's commercial rights to fish in Lake Superior. The tribe was deeply engaged. Tom was the first uh, biologist they hired to uh, begin developing their internal capacity to address their responsibility of uh, protecting the resources and of developing the code and the regulations uh, and some knowledge base. I mean, knowledge base that the tribe could develop and use independent of what was already out there. Because what was already out there was uh, information that had been developed by the state and or the federal government and the provinces regarding the resources in Lake Superior. And what I learned in those two summers in, in what I call those listening sessions is that you know the, the easy part wasn't the affirmation of the right, but what was the greatest challenge to those leaders and those governments was in reemerging. I guess after that long absence, reemerging as a uh, as governments with responsibilities over the resources, uh, those responsibilities shared with other governments. And uh, one of the things I learned in those two summers from, from both of those men was that we've been negotiating with the state of Wisconsin over fishing in Lake Superior, but there are other entities that are out there that are making decisions about those resources. And these entities have, have developed organizations that we do not have a presence in. And what they felt was most important was to begin developing that capacity to reach into those organizations create that presence and, and then take, again, take their position amongst those uh, governments uh, and, and be recognized as a part of the management of those resources. And I think that's really critical. You know, like we did.